Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of England, um, the east of England to be precise, into your homes, onto your phones and welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing by, I tend to talk about what I'd like to think are topics of interest and they'd, inter they'd be interested, the interested parties would be anybody that either doesn't get to read the news, doesn't have access to the news. There's a certain part of the news that isn't highlighted on mainstream news. So what I tend to do is I don't talk for the sake of talking, hopefully. Sometimes I have a lot to say. Sometimes I don't have anything to say. But I don't like to feel forced into talking about a topic just because it's out there. So I haven't done anything for a couple of days. And um, so today I came across an article by Free Movement, and it applies to um, those on immigration bail. And the reason why I thought it was interesting is because they are saying that these people on immigration bail now have to report by telephone. And so I, there wasn't much about the UK's um, version of it I guess until an immigrant is notified they will know what they need to do but what I did find is that America has a telephone reporting system for offenders and I would imagine that the telephone system the reporting system they have for offenders is going to be similar to the telephone reporting system that they have in the UK for those on immigration bail, which are low-risk offenders. And instead of having people chasing miles and cost, you know, paying a lot of money for trains and stuff, they can actually um, have a telephone reporting system. The only thing like with that is that just like the doctors, when you when they say they're going to call you, they give you such a wide window, you can be confined. To a certain place until you get that call and yes you could take your phone with you but supposing you don't have um, you need to charge it and stuff like that you might not have um, the facilities so this is what they're proposing so I'm just going to read it I've given you a summary thank you to my subscribers for continue, continuing to stick with me and to be patient and for those new people who are passing by for the first time I hope you find it interesting, enough to share, like and comment with my subscribers. So um, the heading is Telephone Reporting for People on Immigration Bail. And so this is to take place of the face-to-face -face reporting. So from April 2022, which was last month, the Home Office has moved to use telephone reporting as a mainstream reporting alternative to traditional face-to-face -face reporting, which will require people on immigration bail to verify their identity when they call, supply information requested, probably like address, contact details, details of employment, stuff like that, and the individual will be asked a series of questions specific to his or her circumstances. Um, this follows on from changes implemented on the emergency basis during the pandemic lockdown. So what's happened with the pandemic is that we've all had to find alternative ways to keep in touch. A lot of us use Microsoft Teams, or Zoom, whatever. But so the Home Office and the government offices are doing the same, finding alternative ways to stop people from coming in waiting outside and all of that, even though most people would like to feel as though they can actually speak to the person. And sometimes in these kind of contrived environments, it's not easy to ask the questions. And sometimes they're structured in a way that you can't ask questions. You're just told what to do or it's very clinical. And sometimes it's not conducive as to, as, you know, when you're face to face with somebody, and you can actually talk to them and you feel as though there's a two-way dialogue. I think sometimes, even though these uh, meetings are cost-effective, 
for all parties. They can be cost effective. I don't know if they're going to charge for the telephone call. In America, they charge, they've got a fee of $6 a month. And that's all you have to pay. Hopefully, in the UK, it's not a chargeable call. It'll be an 0800 number and not an 0900 number. That's a premium number. But so hopefully the Home Office will be sensitive to the circumstances of the people who need to call. Um, so, um, like I said, this follows on from changes implemented on an emergency basis during the pandemic lockdown. People who are given a telephone appointment slot will be notified of this decision and the process will be explained in writing only in English. And it will only be in English because one of the criteria for immigration is that you need to have passed the English test, English language test, so that this will enable them to find out whether or not you're eligible, asking you to respond, asking you to ask questions, getting you to write, getting you to submit. How au fait are you with PC? How okay are you with communicating, writing, that kind of stuff? I'm not saying that that is what they're doing, but it's kind of one of those ways that they could screen um, whether or not they're getting the best of the best when they're dealing with immigrants. Now, this is to do with immigration bail. So um, if they're from the Caribbean, they don't need certain parts of the Caribbean, they don't need the English test uh, because it's an English speaking country. But and you are dealing with potential people who have, for whatever reason, found themselves um, undocumented. So the up the upside for those given the new telephone reporting condition, and it won't be everyone, is that they do not have to travel on expensive and time-consuming journeys. It avoids the stress and anxiety caused by wasting time on very brief exchanges that did not allow for meaningful interactions. Chief Inspector of Border and Immigration 2021 Inspection of Reporting at Beckett's House. I guess that's um, one of the rationales behind it. The downside is that there is an element of unpredictability with telephone reporting. People who often have very limited financial resources will be at the mercy of digital technology. They may struggle to afford. People without legal status may struggle to afford reliable mobile phones to access indoor phone charging points or private spaces with good phone signals. Some people prefer the certainty of in-person contact. The, uh, the other downside is that people could be given a very wide window where they are expected to wait for a single phone call. And like I said, sometimes you have doctors who say, I'm going to call you between 9 and 12. That means between 9 and 12, you have to wait around to get that call. Um, if an unreasonable, unreasonably long window is given, then we recommend that people complain. But when you're in these kind of situations, do you really want to complain? It's like the elderly, you know, when they're struggling to in a hospital, they don't want to complain about treatment because they think that if they complain about treatment, they're going to be treated worse because the same people they are complaining about are the same people who have to look after them. So it's a similar situation. You know, free movement are saying if you're given an unreasonable window, you, we recommend that you complain. But you might think, if I complain, are they going to be flexible? Are they going to be um, nice to me? You see? So there's that. In America, telephone reporting is considered low-level supervision and uh, requires minimal face-to-face -face contact with a probation officer. In the circumstances, I would imagine, this is me, um, that it would minimise supervision time by the deportation or home office. I suspect that UK, the use of a telephone reporting system, will be similar to that of the United States. TRS, which is Telephone Reporting System, is an automated telephone web-based monitoring system designed to increase accountability for lower risk cases where an office visit can be replaced by telephone contact. Automatically generated follow-up appointments, failure to call, well, there will be automatically generated appointments and failure to call 
when that appointment's been generated um, will result in the offender reminding them to call. And you don't really want that to happen because it could result in any leniency previously given may not be allowed or permitted in the future. You will need to have a pen and paper handy just in case you receive any special instructions during your call. They may even say, because um, I went to a coroner's hearing the other day, they may even say, do you have anyone else in the room with you? And you may have to identify that person. Maybe not, but you just need to be aware that you may be asked that question. If you have trouble with literacy and you do need a person, that will justify it. You can say, look, I've got so-and-so with me because I'm not very good at spelling. I'm not very au fait with the computer. And I mean, depending on whether they say we need to have you alone, well, you'll have to um, cross that bridge when, it, when, you, when you come to it. OK, um, the call is not complete until you've received your confirmation number. Now, that is in America. I don't know if the, that will apply here, but make sure you look at instructions, follow the instructions. And if they do send you material, make sure you understand it. If you don't understand it, get somebody to translate it for you in plain English so that you do understand what you're signing up for when you're doing the telephone reporting what's going to be expected of you, so there are no surprises. In the States, there is a fee for reporting by phone. Not sure if there will be a fee in the UK. Hopefully, there will not be. And that it will be a number where you can use your minutes allowance, as opposed to 0900 numbers, which are extremely expensive, and would probably not be cheaper than physically travelling to the home office or an equivalent office. And the thing is, once telephone... Um, reporting is in place I don't think you have the option not unless you have a disability to change that I think you know you can I don't think once they've arranged that you can say and like I said unless you've got a disability I don't want a telephone reporting I want to come into the office I don't care how much it costs I don't mind how much I have to wait I just need to see somebody I'm not quite sure if that request will be honored that's all I'm saying it may be I don't know so in the States, they pay $6 a month plus a $2 pound 50, 250, um, £2.50, well, $2.50 fee for electronic payments made by phone or online. So that's pretty reasonable. It is less expensive when you pay months in advance. So I guess if you was to pay six months in advance, $36 for the six months, it would work out even cheaper. That's in America. So hopefully... Um, if England is adopting a similar programme to that of the United States, they will also be adopting a similar rate, um, telephone call rate, as the United States. Um, so in, you'll be given instructions of how to pay in. Phone reporting is meant to save people taking time off work, making childcare arrangements, etc. And... Once you are nominated for telephone reporting, I'm sure you'll be sent all the instructions. Like I said, just make sure you read and understand them. Um, if it's anything like the United States, you may have to complete a report. Um, probably need an ID number, password, email address. You'll have to do a security check. I'm sure they probably have a photograph, your passport photograph or something, so they can see that the person who they are interacting with is the person in the passport, the person they have a photo of. So make sure you don't do any drastic changes, because remember that man that couldn't get on the plane because his passport was in such a, uh, uh, well, they, they deemed it not suitable. He had gone from being a barlet to a dreadlocks. And for those who don't understand Jamaican, um, he went from having, you know, short hair to growing locks. And so they didn't think it was the same person. That caused another delay and resulted in him dying because he didn't get back to the UK in time to get his treatment. So just make sure that your photograph looks similar to who you are. Don't make any drastic changes. Um... And remember, you know, if you are completing the IT, make sure you save all your answers 
um, because I think it's one of these systems where they save where you left off or something, hopefully. You may have to upload a photograph or they will probably have your passport photo on file so they'll know they're communicating with the right person. I've already said you need to be au okay with a PC um, as you may be required to upload or download and you'll probably be asked to certify information is correct. So, you know, this verification thing. So to make sure that you're not committing fraud and they have something to fall back on if you've said something later on down the line and it's not consistent with other telephone calls, other meetings, you could be done for fraud. So make sure you're speaking the truth and everything is kosher. So the law, Section 61 of the Immigration Act 2016, introduced the concept of immigration bail. Bail conditions can be imposed by a tri tribunal, but even when they are, they are often transferred to the Home Office to manage. They can also be imposed directly by an immigration officer, even if a person has never been in detention. So the details of the immigration bail are set out in Schedule 10 to the 2016 Act. To one, subject to subparagraph two, if the immigration bail is granted into a person, it must be granted subject to one or more of the following conditions. A, a condition requiring the person to appear before the Secretary of State or the first tier tribunal at a specific time and place. B, a condition restricting the person's work, occupational studies in the United Kingdom. C, a condition about the person's residence. D, a condition requiring a person to report to the Secretary of State or such other person as may be specified. E, an electronic monitoring condition, see paragraph four. Um, F, such other conditions as the person granting the immigration bail thinks fit. The factors to be considered when setting a bail condition are varied. Three, one, the Secretary of State or the first tier tribunal must have regard to the matters listed in subparagraph two in determining A, whether to grant immigration bail to a person and B, the conditions to which a person's immigration bail is to be subject. Those matters are, this is 2a, the likelihood of a person failing to comply with the bail condition, i.e. like absconding, b, whether the person has been convicted of an offence, whether in or outside the United Kingdom, or before or after the coming into force of this paragraph. 2c, the likelihood of a person committing an offence while on immigration bail. D. The likelihood of a person's presence in the United Kingdom to public health or being a threat to the maintenance of public order. E. Whether the person's detention is necessary in that person's interest or for the protection of any other person. And F. Such other matters as the Secretary of State or the First Tier Tribunal things relevant. Under condition F, any relevant matters can be considered including the best interests of a child or the person's own welfare. The problem with the physical reporting requirement in 2020, and I've kind of um, condensed this, I've cut out quite a bit just to make it, otherwise I'd be here all day. In 2020 at the Charity Migrants Organise, we worked with the Public Law Project. This is um, extracted from freemovement.com, funded by the Strategic Legal Fund to produce research on the impact of bail conditions. In short, we found that onerous and open-ended reporting conditions were being imposed in an unfair and blanket way. The Free Movement research found that onerous and expensive reporting conditions could not be justified. The rate of absconding was extremely low. In 2018, it was 3%. The bail conditions were not being set in line with risk. Telephone reporting has now been rolled out as a standard option. It is described as a blended model where there will still be some occasional face-to-face -face reporting and then most staying in touch can be done by phone call. The COVID-19 interim guidance remains in place at the moment but it is due to be replaced shortly by updated guidance. Requesting changes to reporting conditions, and I touched on this before, 
The Home Office website states you cannot request telephone reporting yourself, but in reality, people who would be assisted by telephone reporting should ask for it. And I assume that's with disabilities and stuff like that. Anyone can make a request to vary their bail conditions. The criteria for selecting bail conditions are those set out above. And these requests can be made verbally at a reporting event or in person. And you should also see also page 61 of the Home Office's Immigration Bail Policy. For disabled people impacted adversely by reporting a bail variation request, could include a request for a reasonable adjustment under the Equality Act 2010. Free Movement states that it is important to note that there is no duty to impose a reporting condition as a condition of bail, whether by telephone or face-to-face. -face. Now, that is important for you to know. Um, the Immigration Bail Policy states only that the bail conditions imposed must, one, Take into account the facts of the individual case. Two, enable the Home Office to maintain appropriate levels of contact with the individual, which is what they're doing. Three, reduce the risk of non-compliance, including absconding. And four, well, four, minimise potential delay in the Home Office's becoming aware of non-compliance. And I guess that is what the follow-up follow -up telephone calls will be about the automatic generated ones, because if you don't respond when you're supposed to respond, this will trigger them to know that you could be non-compliant unless you're in hospital or had an accident or something. So this is their way of monitoring very quickly um, if, there are, if there is any, any non-compliance. And five, be in furtherance of facilitating the individual's return. As such, there will be circumstances where a reporting condition is inappropriate and unnecessary. For people on bail, at least one condition needs to be imposed. But, for instance, for a victim of trafficking who is supported in an NRM safe house, that's the National Referral Mechanism safe house, the Home Office could instead impose a residency condition if they place the person on bail at all. And I hope whoever this applies to or whoever this could help, that it does help. Thank you. Bye-bye.